Um, so I'm gonna do something different this week from our previous couple of streams. Um, the uh, the Cluedo characters that we were doing. I'm gonna give it a break for a minute, and we're gonna make a pumpkin for Halloween. Um, something that a few of us have been doing on the streams so I thought I'd jump on the bandwagon um, as you can see the quick little concept up here so the idea for this guy was I, I, I was trying to come up with something uh, like kind of initially kind of like dynamic and funky and eventually I landed on doing something more um, just to find something different something kind of cuter I thought it would be kind of cool kind of nice so we're doing a cute pumpkin cute-ish I haven't decided kind of again like super quick little sketch uh, just to get the scope started not necessarily something to follow completely just something to give us an idea of where to start so um, hey Chris um, I guess we'll just get stuck into it so I was kind of thinking how how would I go about making a pumpkin um, like in terms of like the process of doing it so we've obviously got the like lines that go down the pumpkin the like valleys but I'm kind of think like the the problematic part of that is like you don't want them messing too much with the uh, the features on the face and I don't have the comfort that you usually would of having necessarily separate pieces because his head is just a sphere so once you kind of have to commit to it um, so I'm thinking just trying to think like where would I put the eyes just using the Damien standard to kind of draw on it think about where I want those eyes to sit I kind of like the idea of them being kind of far apart It'll add to the like awkwardness of them. Maybe a bit bigger. Um, it should be kind of fun. Um, and just yeah, like these, like the angles and stuff, because I'm like I do. I want to render this later. Uh, because it'd be fun to render. Put the like maybe. I don't know whether to make a candle inside them or just put a light inside them or what way to go about it. We'll see. Um, a Yanatin and Khalid. Thanks for joining, guys. Um, welcome. Yeah, so it's it's a strange one, and this this is a good example, probably, of something I say sometimes. You know, like. Sometimes people see like super stylized characters, for example, and where like you know the head is essentially a sphere and whatever. Uh, the the body is like super simple and stuff. Like there's, it seems like there's not a lot of shapes going on. So let's see. Let's just say that. Um. But it's kind of like, uh, the way I described it before was kind of like a game of chess. So, uh, if you imagine, if you have some super detailed um, sculpt with loads of different elements and loads of different, um, like the anatomy is really uh, dynamic and there's lots of, lots of parts, uh, you've got like quite a lot to work with so a way of looking at it is kind of like if you are playing chess it's like being 
having to win a game of chess, but you can you can do like three hundred moves. Where when you've got something super simple and you need to make it look good, it's it's kind of like trying to win the same game of chess in three moves. You know what I mean? It's kind of the the best way I can describe it. It's actually quite difficult. Um And I'm not sure yet if I, how much I want, like, do I want to go into loads of super dense, like, surface detail for this guy and stuff. I don't know. I don't know yet. We'll see how we go. Maybe you can, you can decide. You can say in the chat if you'd like to see loads of detail or keep it more, like, stylized and clean. It's a nice, it's a nice uh, change of pace, I guess. My initial thought was to do something kind of clean, just so it's still, you know, kind of fits with the other type of stuff that I do. Um, side effects, hang on. Our lady. Um, Joel, um, sup? I want to see more streams. Are you working? I upvote that. Keep it up with the good work. Cheers, Joe. Thank you very much. Yeah, I know some of you have been like watching the streams, like their tutorials, which is great. Uh, some people have sent me work they've done after what after watching tutorials, like following along, not tutorial like the the streams and following along as if to follow the way you follow along a tutorial, which is really cool. I like that they're uh, providing that kind of thing. So you can see, like, this is kind of it's kind of goofy, and obviously we're doing the the whole mouth and stuff. But this, in a sense, is like the essence of the character already. It's like a so the idea is to put like have a vine there, like he's he's uh, just. Like the idea in my head was almost like if a the pumpkin was growing and now it's grown to its full size and now it's kind of alive, so it's like it's essentially a baby pumpkin. Kind of, I know that's that's a weird idea, but there you go. That was my uh, dodgy effort at coming up with something different for the fun of it. All right, so let's do some. Now this part is, I'm just going to sculpt into it, but this part is like, what way do I want it even? Maybe I don't want to use symmetry. Or do I want the eyes necessary on like a bulge? How much, like how deep do I make these? It's all the little things that will matter a lot when, when it comes down to it later. Let's try to write the eyes here. Try to make that somewhat central. I want to go I'm going between the eyes there and I think I'm probably going to like add almost like um, like a cut here a little bit that might be an awkward place to put that maybe we'll move that over a little bit because later <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, essentially use this like a, a tool to create the actual mesh that will, will be the final character by um, masking so 
so masking like the eyes and the mouth out and then like cutting them out having some sort of ziri meshed thing and uh, a ziri mesh that mesh then I'm not happy with that um, and I can't think that a ziri mesh that uh, new like plane and then we can use that plane and extrude it inwards to get the thickness of the bunker. That's what I wanted to say. Got there eventually. Tires been busy all week. Um, it's gonna be. It'll be fun. I'm hoping that we can get a couple of the pumpkins that a few of the streamers made, and maybe get them into one render or something like that. And render them all together. Um, I definitely like to get a, a render of this guy because pumpkin with like the nature of a pumpkin with the light inside it and stuff, you can make like a scary kind of lighting setup. Which is why I liked the idea of doing a cute guy because it's like. Um, the contrast of the concept you know uh, which is something you can play with it can be a cool thing to play with like just uh, when you're coming up with something to take the idea and flip it on its head it's a very simple way to just try to come like that will help you come up with something a little bit more fresh of an idea something like that I don't want to go I don't think I want to go too deep maybe in some areas um, okay do you use multiple frames or just this one or oh, references is that what you mean um no for for this it's just just this one reference um it's just something i sketched pretty quickly um oh when you move okay so, um which brushes that you're using? I'm just using the Damien standard brush. Um, and yeah, the concept is mine. Yeah, just um, I tried to do. I tried to. I, I don't always use my own concepts. Depends how I'm feeling. But uh, I like to try to do it as much as I can because I did draw. F well, I still do, but I spent a lot of time drawing. So try to, you know, use that. And it keeps me practiced and. Uh, Learn a bit more on design and stuff. Um, why is your poly count lower when you look around the camera? Um, it's a feature in ZBrush. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a way. I uh, there might be a way to turn that off, but I can't actually think at the moment. But it's just because there's subdivisions. It's not a dynamesh. So when you move uh, around, it go. It drops to the. It drops to. The, I think the lowest. No, not the lowest. It just drops maybe two subdivisions or something as you're rotating. Um I'm trying to Yeah, yeah. I think it's just always on. I was thinking that there's a there's another one like dynamic uh what's it called? When you when you have multiple subtools and when you move it only shows that one subtool. Um that's what I was thinking of. Which you can turn on and off, but I don't think you can turn that off. I don't know, is it like something just to help the the um the, the things not being too heavy when you're moving them around so you don't uh you don't have issues with it like stopping and starting. Um 
to avoid lagging the overall. There you go. Fair play, Khalid. So. Let's pull this around. I was going to actually listen to some, I was going to listen to some music, but I find actually between sculpting and chatting, it's, it's kind of distracting. Even, usually I always listen to music when I'm sculpting, but uh, trying to keep on top of the chat as well. I don't know, maybe I'll get used to it more, the more I do it, but, um, I'm kind of extracting. I, what I was gonna do was listen to some, uh, I know it's very cliche, but when I was a kid, like many people of my age, uh, I, like Nightmare Before Christmas was like one of my favorite films. Um, I watched that thing all year round. I don't know how many times I watched that as a kid. And still now, I love the. There's a there's a, in it there's the the girl Sally she sings a song, in it and the background music to that I love. I always I like listening to that. And I like listening to like film soundtracks sometimes that kind of go with the theme of what I'm sculpting. Kind of puts you in a in a mood for it or something. So okay, that's before I do the whole um, extract the mesh and get the thickness and pull out the eyes and stuff. Let's add in something for the 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 root. Would you call it? Yeah, I guess you call it the root, yeah. Um, so I'm just going to throw in like a. Where is this? Oh, we need. Okay, we'll do it here. You'll do. Actually, a good thing you can do, this is a little tip with Z-Remesh. So at the moment, this is capped on either end. But if I take off, if I open the ends, Open the ends. So that it can't, so I can't wrap the topology around and send it in all sorts of weird loops where you'll get spirals, which is um, where the topology is like spiraling around the whole mesh and you have something to do like this or like horns or anything like that um, if you do this it stops Siri mesh being able to create that and now if I do it let me lower that one all the way down and now you get something cleaner of course that would have to happen
so zero mesh again. Again, we don't have to worry too much about the how the shape is right now, as long as it's. We're just trying to get a mesh essentially that's in the ballpark. Um, I'm gonna try this name, but it is definitely not a, rec a name that I recognize. So I'll try it and I hope I don't butcher it. Forgive me if I do. I wanna say Adve. Let's call it Adve. Correct me if I'm way off there, but um, is asking, can you say what are the new features in 2021 ZBrush? So there's quite a few, I'm probably not gonna, no, I'm definitely not gonna remember all of them. Um, so like, there's a couple, like one of my favorites is the fact that now you can, with the Z modeler brush, you can go in, select an edge, and you can go to extrude and you you can extrude an edge now which is awesome i know it's very simple but it helps so many situations um and then there's of course the cloth the dynamic cloth simulation which is i, I i'm still kind of in disbelief that they actually did that that's a it was pretty crazy to see that coming into ZBrush. It's really, really cool and a lot of fun to play with. Um, there's the micro poly. What? Ah. Why did I have to do that? Um, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. There's loads of... Uh, I'd recommend just going onto YouTube find like there's loads of videos that cover all the features and kind of explain how to use them that are, that are really helpful so I highly recommend doing that golden Yoshi bear hey man uh, Kayla Murphy Hey Paul, is the workflow for creating characters for animation different from making characters for games? Yes. Um, for creating the the initial sculpt, not necessarily no, but uh, for the technical sides of it, the topology is different. Um, <clears throat> in fact, your 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 kind of job role can be often quite different. Like in most animation studios character modeler doesn't do any texturing where in a lot of game studios the character modeler you're a character artist and you do do texturing as well um, but at the same time actually like the pipeline is kind of different and you can be very different um, in just in different studios even if it's the same part of the industry so But uh, yeah, like uh, in animation, we do sub-div modeling. So you make a character and later on that character is going to be, with the knowledge that later on that that character is going to be subdivided at uh, the render stage. Um, and they're high poly at that point where in games you use like normal maps to to get um the higher details in there and it's not subdivided so it's much lower poly on screen because obviously when you're it's a uh, real-time rendering and you, you've also got a player that has to be able to move it around and stuff so you need you need to you need something um, more economical Chad 
Let's see, I don't know what YouTube recommends. I'm trying to stop. Oh, um, Gadsy, we're going with. Uh, I don't know why YouTube recommended this to me, but I can't stop watching it. Well, that's good. Uh, is, is that you're not, I take it, a modeler or anything like that? And this is just popping up for you on YouTube? Little happy accident? That's kind of cool, I'm not going to lie. Um, and Khaled as well. Awesome. Well, I'm not going to complain. I hope you are enjoying it. Um. Martin, it would be great to see the brushes you use in the moment to use them. Yeah, I asked someone about that. Uh, it was actually Joseph just um, about is there a way to make that the kind of brush, um, the, what displays the brush smaller. But the problem that I have with it is just it takes up too much of my UI. Uh, like, it like if I if I put that anywhere here because it's so big, the whole bar raises. So, like, my canvas becomes smaller for one thing. So it would be great if I could add, like, a, add it, like, small somewhere. Maybe not that small, but, you know, somewhere up here or something. Um, but, like, to be clear, um, I'm not using any special brushes. Everything that I've, that I've used and probably anything I will use for this is all uh, standard in... ZBrush. So get some of that. Um, my, I, I think a lot of artists are the same actually when you get to a certain point, I guess. Um, like I kind of used to look for like cool brushes and stuff because I thought I'll be able to do something more interesting with them, but in the end, um, eventually kind of just you just end up falling to the, the the usual ones because they do everything you need them to do um like I, I think we covered i think we we talked about that a little bit on the um zbrush master series uh joseph actually someone asked what brushes i use most and joseph answered for me Joseph said, I bet you I can guess, and I knew he could, and I said to, I said to him to guess, and of course, he got it right, because it was just the standard one, so the Damien standard, the move brush, the pinch brush, um, and that's 95% of what I use, and then the clay build-up. Uh, so obviously here I'm using the 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 move brush. Uh, see, there's no nothing's looping around or doing anything funny on me because uh, of the oh, both open ended. And I could even just rather than sculpting into this, which I probably will anyway because I want to do like. Uh, twisted vine kind of feel um, but like so for example uh, in your games you would probably leave it say for example you would leave it something like this and you would use like normal maps and you just smooth the the faces where in you can see there in animation this gets smoothed like so um, but as you can see there, like if I want this to stay as a hard edge, then I need to add, for those of you who don't know what we call support loops. And the support loops are there to keep this from moving, to keep this middle edge from moving. So you can see there like the, ed, the, the end of the, the kind of stalk, the way it shrinks there, because it's smoothing. So when when it smooths basically what it does is every vert goes towards each other is essentially what's happening um so like all of these verts are moving a percentage to this um edge here this line of verts they're all moving towards that where if i put an edge here now these are moving to this is moving towards that which won't go as far 
this this is moving towards that so that will shift up here say and then these bottom edges are shifting towards this edge so that it has nowhere to go so you can see now see it doesn't move as much anymore so that's the idea of a spot edge so that's that's a big difference between games and animation and um, it's something I like to do as I'm sculpting to try keep things low poly if I can do something like this instead of sculpting then I will because it gives me more control features he goes pretty rapid fire cool yeah so there's there's a, a source to to check out um there's there's a i know there's a ton of videos now even even during the beta testing there was people already um making tutorials uh, ready to upload as soon as it released that hot take now the nice thing here so again like I'm not stick like here this stock kind of goes backwards but maybe like rotating it around might be nice but we'll leave it like that for now uh, just in case I want to sculpt in anything that's symmetrical so let's see this guy so I think we can pretty safely just go with this shape and work with it from there so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just mask around here for the eyes. And now we're going to draw the mouth with a mask. Actually, before I do that, I'm just going to subdivide it one more time. second um, where was I here and I A's in law says I hear in most studios 3D game artists do everything even rigging yeah I mean uh, like I said um, it really depends on the studio but yeah that's it's, um, in some studios yeah you definitely do it all it, it, it also something that tends to be a factor is the size of the studio so often what happens in smaller studios is you'll you'll actually have more responsibility because you know there's less people and um, kind of a smaller budget on certain things sometimes so it can be a case where uh, you're you're the modeler texture artist and rigger or maybe you're the character modeler and the environment modeler even stuff like that um, but yeah it, it, it's uh, you definitely like you can't just walk from an walk out of an animation studio and into a game studio and just know exactly what you're doing there is there is a there is differences for sure yeah, I like stylized uh, Khalid says I like stylized characters tutorial but I don't mind seeing stylized pumpkin yeah that's cool we well, keep them stylized a bit the nice thing something that I like to do even if I'm not going completely stylized or if I want to add like the surface detail or something is you're still thinking about the primary shapes and making those shapes really interesting 
um, and then what you can do at and it like your style is still going to come into play in terms of you know how much you want to push the proportions or whatever but um, if you're doing Um, this is actually really awkward. Um, if you're doing like this stylized sculpt, you can always just do the surface detail on top of that, and that can actually look really cool when you have like this super stylized face or whatever, but you've got all the skin pores and everything. E six seven five. I'm so happy that I found a channel like this on Twitch. I'm sculpting myself as well at the moment. I use Blender, but your general sculpting tips are really useful. Thanks, T. Yeah, I like that. I like the idea of um, it's all kind of sculpting along with each other. Because anytime I ever watch anything like this, I always I'm always sculpting when I do it. get more general with this and now I understand why like it is actually it can be it depends on what you're doing but it can be fairly difficult to to kind of concentrate on the on the sculpt and chat with everyone but at the same time It's really fun to kind of sit in here sculpting and because usually you know like like a lot of my friends and stuff they don't they're not sculptors or anything half of them are like carpenters or you know that kind of thing they're not going to sit here and watch me sculpt and chat to me so it's kind of nice to have it's like a it's like a bit of company while you're sculpting which i like Murphy, that's a very is that an Irish name? I wonder. It's very, it sounds quite Irish. Um, in games, we try to get away with getting our low poly models have that high level detail. So I see what you mean. It's cool animation has a different workflow. Thank you, Bob. No problem, Kyra. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I mean, it's it. There's of course lots of similarities. A lot of people do go between the two like I've I have I've done work for game studios but um that's not gonna work I need something thicker um but yeah they're different but the same So what I'm trying to just pay attention to a little bit here is just like varying up the shapes, not having not having um, each tooth, if you want to call it a tooth, uh, like the same width and stuff. Have, you know, a couple small, a couple medium, a couple large. need to keep an eye I mean I can always shift the shape around a little bit but what I want to keep an eye on is because this is like a sphere I don't want the mouth to be going down and underneath because that's going to look funky if I do that struggle with face plane changing um, I mean
mean, that's a. You, is it you, your struggle where to have a, a plane change or a struggle making the plane change kind of look right? Or what's what do you mean when you say you struggle with it? Um, that's all. Um, I, I I was talking to someone about this yesterday. I give some feedback on the on my Discord server. Um, the people like they they upload their work. The members there upload their work. You can join it. So there's nothing. There's no cost or anything, of course. Um, and um, there's a couple of good artists in there that give some feedback as well. But uh, I try to give people feedback there. And uh, there was a person. on there there's a person on there like a regular Beshkin uh, that I was talking to this about talking about this too um, or something similar in terms of like where to put hard edges where to be round where to have a plane change like you really just kind of need to have when you when you do anything like that when you make a decision like that it has to come from some sort of reasoning and not be just plane change for the sake of a plane change if that makes sense it has to have like whether it comes from anatomy like your 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 understanding of anatomy and you know like there's a bone in this particular place so you want to use a plane change here to kind of um show that this is like a bony landmark for example like that would be a common reason on a character for example um, or like you know wrinkling in clothes like you don't want plane changes everywhere necessarily uh, usually you want to kind of balance it but um, I generally kind of think of like edges plane changes like that as like you know I, I try to think like in terms of everything being round and having nice volumes and then accent those volumes with plane changes and you're kind of picking the same almost the same way you pick a highlight um, you're kind of thinking where you want that you're looking at your your now volumes and thinking where do i want to put a plane change where do i want a hard edge Kind of my way of thinking about it. this big tooth here hmm. see uh, okay so another thing I'm trying to avoid is like see like this line this line like here against here like I don't want this to all be uh, uniform thickness so I want it to taper taper in and out and so on because uh, uniform thickness it's 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 one if, if so part of like design is contrast and regardless of whether the thing is good or bad if it's different it will catch the eye and when i say good or bad i mean if you have if all your shapes are working but then you've got like this unintentional tangent somewhere it's going to grab the person's eye if you have all these nice dynamic shapes and then in one part there's like this rigid you know symmetrical um piece there's no taper or anything it will it will again it will grab the eye so sometimes you want to use something like that to grab the eye but you should it should be in there because you wanted it to be and not because you missed it or or whatever you know
Hmm. I'm not so sure about this middle part, I don't think. This part is more time consuming than I had given it credit. But if we want it to be clean, it's probably better. Than just like using, you know, Dynamesh or whatever, and just sculpting, pushing it in. It's a, it's a like, because the, the other argument there is, well, you could just retop it after and clean it up at that point. But, um, which is true, but I don't want it to have to re in order to produce a clean sculpt. I like it to be clean. It was a weird thing that came up before in work. Because it's generally understood that like, you know, you do your sculpt and then the modeling pass will be even better than the sculpt because it will be cleaner. But if you sculpt really clean, then actually the, the modeling pass is rarely as good as your sculpt because you've got more artistic license with your sculpt because your model has to follow particular topology. And you know, you can't go up in density to add little wrinkles and all that kind of stuff. And that has to come in later with maps. So it's not always true. I think kind of happy one thing so again like this is just coming to me there I was like don't close them out too much like don't make sure there's a decent gap there because at some stage I'm going to put a light in here and I don't want just like a tiny you know it'd be nice to have something Or should I make a candle for it? Not tonight now, but later. We'll have time to put a candle on top of this, I don't think. thing we can do is let's just do a general so whatever is the cap where the stock sits into that gets cut out ah there's Gav Gavin O'Donnell's in the chat there he's a he's a he's a artist that works with me he's a map painter Um super talented artist make sure to check him out as well he does some very pretty paintings let me see here so i'm just trying to think is that like wide enough because i i want to make sure that whatever can't like i might i could end up having a bit of a top down angle so you know, it's just a bit of thinking ahead. If I have a bit of a top-down angle, am I still going to be able to see it? Yeah. So I'm going to go down my subdivisions. The reason I go down my subdivisions is if I take a move brush here and squeeze it up, I'll get this. And that's that's okay. It's not, it's not the end of the world. Um, a better example is if like I needed to move the edge in here and I start pushing and stuff like that and suddenly now I've all these like lumpy bits where if I need to do that really if I go down the subdivisions and push them in and then go back up them I won't get those lumps 
Um, so if I'm making moves like this, I'll always go down the subdivisions because you have more control over the entire shape. It's essentially, the idea is very similar to clay sculpting. If you think about subdivisions, like adding and taking away water, think about it that way. Like when you're doing your first initial um, shapes in your clay, you're gonna want, I should say water or heat. Uh, you're gonna want your clay warm. Heat is a better analogy. Um, you're gonna want your clay warm because you want to you want it really malleable so you can like make big changes and big shapes and then as you get further along and you're doing more detailed things they're smaller they're more intricate and so using warm clay to make those it's it's too squidgy and it doesn't so you want harder clay and you can kind of cut away at it and it's it's a you can make more you can make smaller details with harder clay um, so if you think about like a high subdivision a high subdivision level as like harder clay and the low subdivision as the warmer clay if you want to think about it that for any use you guys that come from a traditional background so something I'm being kind of wary of is like so instinctually almost I kind of wanted to do this but I don't want to make that too round necessarily because I want to be able to see the entire face from whatever camera angle I'm coming from so obviously if I bring this out that eye is going to wrap around the side which isn't a bad thing but I just need to know be aware of it now and control it rather than find out too late that when I set my camera angle that I have to go to certain camera angles only because otherwise I can't see the, the parts of the face that I want to be able to see. It's the little things. Um, let's see here. Well, okay. Aizenlal asks, what would you skip if any if you're doing 3D art to be used as concept art. Uh, so for example, you could, you could, uh, you don't have to sculpt the back. You don't have to worry about it as long as it looks good from that particular angle, for example. Uh, that's something you could skip. You don't have to worry about um, cut throughs and messy bits. If it's not visible in the render, it doesn't matter. Um, Yeah, you, you just don't have to be as clean. You know, if you're making clothes on top and there's all sorts of messy bits inside the clothes that are cutting through and you've got like, you've, you've uh, you know, dynamesh something and inside it's completely closed and clashing through the body, it, it, none of that matters. Um, where sculpting for production, like, I, w I just wouldn't do that because it just makes for a really messy sculpt to do your topo on top of yeah. so I'm just thinking like this is kind of the angle I'd probably go for with the render So that Matthias says, how, go how good is the chance to get a job as a character artist if you have a good reel nowadays? It's high. There's lots and lots of studios. Um, sometimes I, I hear people, I have heard people in the past say, oh, it's hard to get a job. And it, like, if you're not good, it's hard to get a job. Um, if you're good at it, um, and I know that's 
sometimes hard to know you know where you are compared to a professional level and um, so that can be that can be difficult oh sean's in hey hopper sean um that can be difficult to know where you are and how to gauge your work but uh like there, there is plenty of jobs oh when did i lose that oh that's very unfortunate hmm Let me see. Duplicate this. Go back here. We're doing some on the fly troubleshooting. And then we'll go back. There you are. like project this but I'm not gonna do that this uh, tree will get you sometimes um so yeah there there is lots of jobs in because there's so many like okay if you want to go work in like you know uh, epic games or supercell or you want to work in like disney or dreamworks or something yeah it's yeah it's it's not it's not super available there's not loads of jobs there but there's so many smaller studios it, like it it also depends the country you're in if you're not willing to travel look at that that is wildly upsetting um So yeah, there is though. I wouldn't uh, wouldn't be disheartened. There is plenty. Yeah, because I know a lot of people do. There, well, I don't want to say a lot of people, but there, there's people who say, "Oh, it's really, it's really hard." It's really hard if you're if you're at a very beginner level. Um, but that said, I've seen some juniors that are very, very beginner. Uh, against some studios, so. I'd, I'd say yeah, if you're if you're willing to travel certainly there's lots oh is that cool fat guy finished yet says Mohammed. Uh, uh he's not because i've only been doing him in the stream and because you know halloween's coming up and everything we're taking a break to do this little pumpkin guy but um i will be finishing him I, i'll continue with that in the next stream I, i'm using that as kind of like to, so you guys can actually see me do a character from start to finish so there's no you know there's no doubts that am I doing something behind the scenes that you aren't seeing that's like there's none of that none of that going on so you get the full the full picture from Vietnam awesome thanks for joining uh, kind of like get confused between realistic anatomy and stylized I get the body but the head it's a different story Um, I mean th there's a lot of that that comes down to practice you know uh, that just comes down to it's like building a visual library you can't teach someone a visual library um it's it's purely something that comes with experience now i wouldn't say you can't teach someone um about where to use plane changes and stuff necessarily but um in terms of like your own instincts into when to use that kind of stuff uh definitely improve with time and you know you need you need to have a really good understanding of like real anatomy before you can do stylized because your choices your design choices and stylized sculpting
come from uh, it's, in stylized anything uh, in sculpting is no is no different uh, you need to you need to understand that stuff because stylized anatomy is is a play on real anatomy it's not different anatomy you know a cheek is a cheek in stylized or you know it, like the trapezius muscle in a stylized character is still a trapezius muscle it's just uh, pushed or whatever in a certain way um, caricatured you could say and uh, where is it is that going now I think Kayla say a part Irish didn't I yeah you're right I'm part Irish awesome ah got it I know an Irish name when I see one that is like Kayla Murphy is a super Irish name I expect you to like live on a farm no that's that's weird I know I'm just stereotyping my own people Um. hey Jan um. okay such piano uh, hi Paul I looked in many places but could not find the answer so I'll be glad if you can answer is it necessary to unite the eyes and the eyebrows with the body when doing retopology Um my dog is looking at me here like let me out <laughs> oh, I'm gonna, here come here hold on come here, here. say hi say hi to the internet this is Bilmer this is my dog <sighs> oh guys I'm just gonna open the door two seconds Sorry, where was it? Uh, eyes and eyebrows with the body when doing retopology. I'm not sure if you mean uh, to have the eyes, the eyeballs as part, like as part of one mesh with the body. If that's what you mean, then definitely not. Uh, the eyes will be separate pieces. Um, will be separate meshes. Is that is that what you're asking? I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, Rayan, Rayan is asking, did you try Blender? I have tried Blender. Did not work. I, not that I'm not I'm not giving out about Blender. Um, but it's um. Just navigate, and, and I know there's people who say, "Oh, navigating and all that kind of stuff is way better in in Blender," and I'm sure it probably is. Um, but you know, like I've a fairly, I would say, quite packed kind of schedule, so it's it's difficult. I I really do want to learn because there's so many tools in there, and the more tools you know, the more options you have open to you. So. Um, I'm not I definitely would love to learn more and get a good a good grasp of blender but um yeah I just haven't I haven't been able to give it enough time and and like it does it, it is always difficult when you start messing around with new software the navigation is different um all the buttons are in different places you know you're you want to just add a cube and you can't find it and you have to I know you're watching tutorials and stuff um, but especially when you know I think it's even it's almost worse when you know 
like other software that you can you know I can immediately just do this in two seconds in that software that I do know it, it almost makes it harder to to commit to learning a new software um, but I, I I'd love to give it a try yeah for sure oh, fireworks are kicking off I think he's heard that saying how did you do that i want to know because i want to do it too but my computer is to is an old computer I, i'm not sure which part you're talking about yeah. um maybe throw that into the chat which part you want to know how i did paul i've heard um peter's saying paul i've heard that passion and personality really make a huge difference in getting a position as well especially for a junior who may not have the experience what do you think okay that's a good question um not that they're not all great questions guys i love all these equally but uh that's that's a nice one so yeah i can talk a little bit to that so um yeah and you're right especially in a junior like so we'll, we'll, we'll start with that with a junior if you're new and you're starting in a job um you know say you were starting in a job in 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 the company i work for and you're going you're and you know i'm working with you on a day-to-day basis like if if you start and you immediately start being like oh i have to do blend shapes or you know you start complaining or you start being any way complacent or anything like that i'm immediately gonna have a problem like to me like when i started my first first time in the studio like uh, i was i was only short of going around just hugging everyone i was so happy to be there to actually get the chance to work in a studio so for me to see someone start and 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 not be i don't mean to be grateful i mean you get into the studio because you got the skills and you did the the work to get there it's not necessarily about being grateful like the studio's done you a favor or anything but it's 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 an exciting career to start especially because it's not you know if you're getting into this career it's because it's something that you're really into um you know it's not just a job you fall into um so yeah i i I, passion and personality for sure come into it because someone who's really passionate about it and loves doing it and you know is excited to do it um there's a high chance that they're gonna get really good because they're gonna want to do it all the time you know there's a lot of people like you see a lot of seniors and stuff and um <clears throat> leads and so on that don't necessarily um and and it's fine you know everyone has different priorities um not to knock it but uh that you know they do their work during the day and they, they're often very good it's not it's not like these people are bad or anything um but they they just it's it becomes like a job they do their work every day and then they just go home and they do other things which is fine um but like the best like but i i love to see people um especially like if i was um doing an interview or something like seeing someone who clearly like it's more than a job to i guess because it's more than a job this has happened again that's very um here's a question for you does anyone know why that's happening because that is a pain uh how do i fix this okay we'll do it in a different mesh so we'll duplicate this i 
guess we'll just do it with a different mesh. All right, let's just. So we're not here all day. Um, we'll go back to when this wasn't broke. I know I'm obviously doing something wrong there. I can't remember why, but there we go. Yeah, there. Why does it break there? Any old. So does that look okay there? That's not jarring. So I'm gonna try this method. See how this goes. Um okay, so I'm not gonna go too low. If I go super low on the Z remesh, we're definitely gonna lose a chunk of this. And it's gonna this is gonna be difficult for a Z remesh. I am I was worried about this earlier. Cause I'm really hoping that this because this is really intricate, like and lots of weird edges and stuff. So this is a even for something like Z remesh, this is gonna be a, a tricky one. Okay, well let's do that. Um so yeah, I hope that answers that. Like, it is, is super, super important. Um, yeah, as one, yeah, yeah, as one mesh, the eye thing. Yeah. So no, you don't want to have your eyes as the same, the same piece. That's gonna be. That that'd be problematic. That's because um, you won't be able to turn the eyeballs. So I know most people using ZBrush have tablets with the screens. No, most people don't. Um, they're they're a, they're a lot more expensive. Um, most people just use a standard graphics tablet, which is perfectly fine. Like I could do any of this with a normal graphics tablet. This this is a a luxury it's not it's not a requirement uh, I guess when you say a 2d tablet you mean a 2d I'm not sure what you mean by a 2d tablet like an Intuos for example uh, this is a Cintiq uh, an Intuos or I mean I used to use when I started I used to use this like um, this graphics tablet that my mom actually she works in a school she no one was using it in the school and it was for like a whiteboard for teachers and um she took that home and i used that for i was painting and stuff in photoshop for ages i didn't use it in 3d but i mean i could um and then i was using like the cheap like kind of bamboo for a long time yeah uh, you don't have to break the bank to be able to do this it's not the hardware is not um in terms of that you don't need something really fancy to be able to do good work uh, if you're if you if you know your principles and everything you're a good artist you'll be able to do it regardless trying with the grease pencil yeah that looks kind of cool i've seen some people do some kind of cool stuff with that it's interesting um but i haven't used it myself um Berke, uh, Bercia, Berke, uh, i use an interest pro 2017 for zero brush at home and the cintiq at work and i'm fine with both exactly there you go i mean an interest pro in 2017 is more than enough. Um, I did, there's some people don't like using the Cintiqs, so the screens. Some people don't like it. This is upsetting me. Um, let's try Alt Z remesh. Um, probably not gonna fix it, but.
let's see hopefully this isn't something we have to deal with over a, a chunk of the stream um okay so oh, damn it. so fair i think it's just too much of a disconnect for me yeah i mean to be honest if well, how long have you used it for have you used like a normal tablet I, i'd ask that because i know a lot of people struggle a little bit the disconnect to begin with but you very fairly quickly get used to it Um, i found i fairly quickly got used to it Um, i know some people don't like uh, using the screen because their hand is in the way which i know sounds silly because if you're drawing on paper your hand is in the way but when you get used to seeing the screen in front of you and your hand is out of the way i mean it is something that you could that would kind of bother you sometimes i do find myself like twisting my wrist up and around to see where i'm um yeah there you go fair season way ahead of me i'm definitely butchering that name these are very interesting names i must say i don't think we have very it's not a, a huge range of names around in ireland um Yeah, he's saying, yeah, man, keep at it. We'll get the hang of it, exactly. And pretty quickly. Um, so literally just Zach. That, now we're talking. Uh, you feel like you've actually made it in the field you wanted when you work in an actual studio. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. I don't know. First time, first day in a studio, I could not believe I was there. And I wasn't even, like, I was decent. It wasn't like, you know, I was super beginner, super junior. Like, I was a decent sculptor. Um, but, you know, still, it was my first job. And I didn't know what a decent sculptor was. Not really. Like, not. I was expecting to walk into that studio and everyone to be 20 times better than me. Which, like, yeah. I mean, it wasn't necessarily the case. You know what I mean? I was, I was decent. I was a pretty good sculptor. So, um. And, but I wasn't really doing stylized at the time so I had some practice but I took to it quite quickly um, <clears throat> so which was a big surprise uh, hold on. okay I need to fix this <sighs> I really don't want to have to go around with a slice trying to clean up these edges wait a minute sketchy okay let's come to think of it i haven't saved this pumpkin so let's save this first before we get to uh there you go yeah so polish crisp edges so that's just taking the jaggedy the jaggediness out of that which um because z remesh tries to capture the surface and create topology that works with that surface um it's seeing all that and trying to calculate like what way to have the topology there and on so many different points um that you're given you're given the poor thing an impossible job I like the idea that Ziri Mesh is like a little person or a little creature. Oh, that'd be a great scope, a Ziri Mesh creature. What does that look like? Just loads of hands, maybe, that like reorganizes stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna think about that one. Um, so, I, I, Every time I go to read it, even though I keep doing it, I keep hesitating because I'm like, I'm butchering that name and I feel bad. See? See how that worked better? Oh, we missed a bit there. That's okay. We'll just give it a little bit more room to breathe there. What are we on? 10,000. Um, so, 
Interesting. Okay, where was I? Interesting because I find I have more strain on mine. Maybe because of my macho iron gamer grip. Um, Papa Sean saying I have something similar when creating poly groups on high subdivisions and then going back down in subdivisions. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to avoid that to be honest. Um, I'm usually obviously working in separate pieces, so I can even go a little bit higher. You know? So uh, I see there on Newton's ZBrush, what does even measure do? So I kind of explained it there a little bit. Um, it takes your surface, so you can see this is super dense. Um, it 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 takes the surface and just gives it new topology that works with the surface and you can you can change so you can change the amount of polys that it will aim for and it will essentially retopologize your entire mesh so that's not looking too shabby but i still need to get a little more because we want this we want the teeth and stuff to be able to be we want to be able to be able to, to move them and stuff afterwards so it's worth a little bit so it's worth it can be worth trying to get this right um Mateo Stella hey man it's annoying but happen if you create polygroup at high level subdivision it tries to approximate to lower levels yeah that sucks there has to be a way to fix that has to be um Soraya, why he looks so mad? Me? Do I look mad? Um, can you just take two tones of the blender? Yeah. <laughs> um, I go use a sixty dollar. How do you? Is it human tablet? And I got pretty good with it. Yeah, I mean, works perfectly. Okay. So now. Now we've got something a bit more manageable. Now we can extrude. A nice thick pumpkin. Do you know what? Actually, I could print this. That could be fun. Flip. Print this bad boy. Yeah, it looks like. Boom. So now I'm going to add some loops in here. I'm going to subdivide this and try to project the outside. See that? Just Ape shit. Um, gonna subdivide. Oops, I did something like that. Um, sure. is may jump the gun on the old extrusion. Look at that. See how that does that? Add that loop in. Makes that harder. We can add in a few here. And if it doesn't cause me any issues.
Let's see what's happening. Do you think blocking it? Okay. Do you think blocking out method like Shane Olsen is good for beginners, even for blocking non-stylized characters? I mean, realistic scores. Yeah, I do. I think it's super important. Um, it's uh, where you can make more of your artistic decisions because once once you've got a high density mesh you are limited in making big movements um, in a lot of ways so it can be yeah it's blocking something out is definitely uh, super important for both It's the same, like it, I mean, you, when you never see like a traditional sculptor not block out, he has to block out. You know, that's kind of essentially the way I think about it. Um, let's see the back of this face. So this is kind of higher than ideal, but like for Ziri Mesh to get this amount to work, I don't have too much of a choice really. Um, so we're gonna have to do, you know, we're gonna have to just be that bit extra careful to get the shapes the way I want them. Um, <clears throat> because I don't have the luxury of having like a low, super low poly count that if I move some stuff around when it's smooth it will just smooth between the low amount of edges and give me exactly what I'm looking for give me that smooth smooth um, edge where with this if I move stuff around and I'm not careful about the points either side of it and so on it will give me a lumpy you know, nice one there Um, you know, like here, I'm just keeping an eye on my edges and so on. So I'm control clicking on the inside with the transform tool and that will mask the inside because it's a its own polygroup and then I can control click to like shift the mask around. So Helmy says you're so good. Thanks very much, Helmy. Um, what's the difference between Dynamesh and Zero Mesh? Dynamesh will, by default, will weld everything together. Um, so if you've got separate pieces and you hit Dynamesh, it will weld them together. Or if you've got pieces that are close together, you can turn that off, but that's what it'll do. And it tends to be denser. I, I'm not sure how the so like Ziri mesh 
people tend to try and give you like quads for the most part um, where Dynamesh will it's more for like high density mesh so I'm gonna move this just so I can pull that back in so I can pull this vary the thickness this way I can control the thickness yeah I want it thicker in here actually Give me that sort of probably makes more sense huh? um ah oh, Darko's in again hey Darko no worries for that Darko walks me as well for those of you who don't know He's caught the last, I think, like the last two streams, right? Maybe more. Babu. Hey, Paul, do you ever crease your models? Yes, yeah, sometimes. But so crease is great, um, and it works well, especially with certain tools. The reason I don't generally use crease too much is purely just because, for work, um. Sometimes you like crease, um, you know, the edge of the eyelids or something like that. Um, but then you've got to bring it into another software and your crease is gone. Or you forget that you didn't add a loop back in somewhere because you can't really see it necessarily until you completely subdivide it. Um, so um, I generally don't use it that much. But sometimes, if I just want to get, if I just want to, it's like a, it's a, pla as a, a placeholder. Yeah, I do. But, uh, often I'll just add in a support edge, just because, um, it takes me like it doesn't. It only takes me a second to add in a support edge, or to remove a support edge. Yeah, so MK Animation asks, what's your favorite piece of work you've done so far in your career? Um, that's a really tough question. Um, favorite piece. It's hard to think. I mean, Like I like some of them for different reasons. Yeah, it's, um, I definitely don't have one off the top of my head, obviously. Uh, what I need. Um, I would say, like. In, in terms of like shows that I've worked on actually I can't tell you what show I'm currently working on but that's my favourite so far um, in terms of uh, just in the studio I'm working in I mean in terms of like just work in general oh, Jesus um, I've done some fun games characters for stuff that hasn't released so again I can't actually say um, but they were fun fun sculpts 
yeah it's tricky when it comes to the professional work because a lot of it i can't actually tell you what it was um unfortunately the in my personal sculpts um I, there's a there's one there lou who's like a i think he might be my favorite i don't know like in terms of, he was just fun to sculpt the shapes were fun they were a nice balance of like kind of tricky to figure out really interesting but at the same time like you know it wasn't a headache either that was nice it hit a nice middle ground um no i've deleted something i shouldn't have there i think oh maybe Um, I do want those eyes to be quite thick. Uh, remember as well, when you're doing this later and you get it up to whale scale and you, depending on what you're rendering in, like the thickness is gonna matter when it comes to like subsurface scattering and you're gonna put a candle in it, so you do want some of that probably. Um, for those of you who don't know, subsurface scattering is when light photons pr break a surface and don't quite escape and so they bounce around inside so it's like when you put a torch up to your hand and your hand lights up uh, the light particles don't quite escape and it kind of spreads in the surface same thing's happen with candles um, Papa Sean, you got any advice about getting over artist block? Really struggling to do anything at the moment. Feel like I don't know how to do anything anymore. So, yes, I do. Uh, how I get over that is do something super simple. I mean, it's, it's you know, obviously I didn't invent that <laughs> uh, strategy, but what I tend to do is just find a bust. Don't overcomplicate it. Um, there was a time there where I just did busts for a while because I was just, uh, you know, I did a bust, I was enjoying it, so I just kept going that route. Um, so that's that's what I'd recommend is um, do find, you know, do something in your comfort zone, you know. Um, you're allowed to do that sometimes. Um, and don't get you know don't don't get like usually it's because a, a lot of times it's because you're putting too much pressure on yourself uh, and that's never that's never good like too there's a certain amount there's a certain amount of pressure that's okay but that's that's even a good thing but um i think um but you can often, especially when you do some good stuff, I think you're getting tired, but now you're putting pressure on yourself because you have to keep, you feel like you have to keep putting out good stuff. Um, like it's, in a way, it's a good thing because you care. So, but um, on the other hand, you know, it, it has the negative effect of where you kind of, you feel a bit burnt out and uh, a bit fed up. Um, so I would recommend just do something simple that you can just you can knock it out over a weekend you know what I mean not even over a weekend in a, in a day you know just take a a bust in your comfort zone or something in your comfort zone and just have a bit of fun with it and don't overthink it sometimes some of those like that that bust or that character I'm talking about Lou so it's one of the characters in my portfolio. Uh, it was just it's uh, David Boudreau did the design, um, and it was a couple. It was like a little series of of um, sketches that he did. Really, um, I was flicking through his portfolio. I, I'm, I'd be a big fan of his work. Um, 
and I seen those I was like oh I'm gonna sculpt them sometime and put them in the the two sculpt folder and that was it uh, a while later I was like I want something not you know something within my comfort zone like style wise and stuff like that that I can just have a bit of fun with that isn't like loads and loads of work because there's loads of different pieces to it and it's super intricate or whatever you know it's just a good looking good little character and uh, then you enjoy that and even then maybe you don't want to you still don't want to get into a big project or whatever so do another bust and just do that that'll keep you going until you feel like you want to take on something bigger again that's what I'd recommend Um. Sometimes you need a break. Sometimes you just need a break. I've definitely done that. You know, no matter even when you're even when you love doing something, I mean, it's very few people that don't get tired of even the the like thing that they're most passionate about. You know, every, like every now and again, because you're doing essentially you're doing the same thing. So sometimes you just you want to break from doing that one thing. Um, I wouldn't recommend you know don't don't try not to spend too long away from it. It happens. People do it all the time. The best of professionals have done it. So you know it happens, but try not to to do that. Um, it's it a small break can be good. You can come back feeling you know revigorated. I'm saying that word. Um, but yeah obviously when you get too long you can start to you come back and you're a bit kind of rusty and you might be frustrated with that then so we might just no, I just we're going manual Starko's, yeah, just be a gender. So that's Starko's way around it. Is he never gets sick of it because he does characters, environments, modeling, texture, and the guy's like a library of knowledge. He just does all of the things. So that way, when he gets a bit pissed off with doing characters after a while, he does some environments. If he gets pissed off with environments with like modeling, just focuses more on lighting for a while, maybe goes back to characters. I don't know, maybe throws his hand at badminton, I don't know what the, that guy just, he, he's no, he's got no prejudices, he likes it all, um, and it, it works, I mean, I, I, I've kind of been, I, I, I would say, you know, like I don't, I, I wouldn't, like I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be a generalist, I'd be more of a specialist, um, I guess, I, that sounds like, what I mean is, like, I'm I'm not an environment modeler or anything like that. I can do, I can box model or whatever, but um, it's never something I do in my spare time necessarily. But when I get a bit tired of sculpting sometimes and, you know, I'm not doing a bust or whatever, um, I'll try to do some, just draw, I'll just draw. Um try to do some funky designs try a bit of painting again for for a while do that every now and again um because i used to paint all the time so i'll try you know do a kind of you know character design and paint it up so yeah to that goes point you know i mean you could be a generalist or you know just something something else along those lines you know, just take a take a minute from sculpting. And do something else badass. Some skydiver out there down thinking, yeah, we think you're a badass because you sculpt. You jump out of planes for a living.
Would you jump out of a plane? Obviously with a parachute. Would you do it? I don't I don't know if I would. That thought, sorry, that thought just crossed my mind. Would I actually do it? I don't know. It's a great video of an old woman. Fair play to her. She jumps out of a plane. But she had to be pushed. But she jumped. Uh, but God love her. She gets strapped in the... She gets messes up the straps. And one of the... So the instructors... She's strapped to the instructor. You can watch it on YouTube. And she kind of falls... Her ass falls back out of the harness, kind of. So now... Her arms are stuck up in the air and her ass is hanging, is the lowest part of her. Her feet are up because the straps that should be up around her thighs are down around her knees. So her legs are like up in the air. Her arms are up in the air. The instructor on her back, I'd imagine, is having an absolute heart attack because how is she supposed, how is she supposed to land? Or if she slips out of them entirely, she's going to free fall. Um, but... And it's horrific, but my sick sense of humour. Because I knew she was going to be okay. Obviously, I wouldn't laugh if the woman died or anything. I'm not, I'm not that bad. But um, Oh man, I was crying. <laughs> I, have an, I have an awful sense of humour. Should we get back to the stock and do some sculpting on the stock, maybe? Huh? So we can get rid of. That head. So we're all the thing. Yep. Make it all quick save. Yeah, I think we're just going to accept fate and get messy with this. Um, we'll do our old polished crisp edge. Bonk. Look at that. I actually only learned about that recently. I never used that. Great look. Boom. I mean, I shouldn't really need to, but I will duplicate just in case I do need to reproject. Zero mesh, that's going to be too low. Um, <laughs> NASA just landed on a crater. We are sculpting. <laughs> yeah, but look, I mean, that's impressive. I will say that is impressive that they've landed on a crater and, you know, gone on them. But, you know, you need all of this. You need the spectrum of things. You, know, you can't just have stuff landing on craters. You also need digital pumpkins, for example, sometimes. You know, depends on your mood. Providing a service. Um... thing going on um, oh, is it Mel from France Melanie Melanie is that the idea 
Um, <laughs> they landed a ship on another celestial body. Like, I mean, yeah, that's that's yeah. Okay, slightly, I guess, more impressive than my pumpkin, but only slightly more impressive. What time is it? Oh, Jesus, time flew there. I'm gonna have to get used to this, like sculpting and chatting. I tend to. I it's the same thing. Anytime I go out or anything like that, fucking talking too much. Waffling. I mean, two hours is enough to finish this for sure. At least, well, at least more or less. Push a look. As long as he's learned something, I'm happy. And if he didn't, at least he had a decent time. Yeah, look at him. Absolutely lovely. So, what I'll do from here. sculpt into this a little bit and then we'll boolean that into the other the part of the pumpkin's head and when we when we've sculpted it though because i want to get the kind of hard edges and stuff back into it see this is why i don't like sculpting too much on you see that kind of awkward and they just have to fight it and it's just upsetting so actually let's get rid of those oh yeah we have to get rid of this let's get rid of those just turn on double on just to check there's no dodgy weird stuff coming out of the mesh or anything um Sorry, well, oh yeah, hi, uh, my L entry, my L entry. Let's go with that. I'm gonna start just intentionally reading names wrong because at least then it's not like maybe it's funny and not just Selvinley. Selvinley says hi. Um, MK animation. I learned that Kearney's can't skydive. <laughs> yeah, man. Who knew? Who knew? A god lover. It's funny. Or I mean that that um, it doesn't get much better than the. I mean, I, I'm saying this, and I'm aware that I'm talking to. All sorts of people from all over the world, and maybe this is just like my sick sense of humor, and I shouldn't find this funny in the grand scale, scale scheme of things. But that woman spinning at the helicopter with the helicopter thing, like tears were bellowing down my eyes. That was just. Yeah, old women, they're not great with flying, it turns, it would seem. Of any sort, really. You know, we all have our strengths and weaknesses, I guess. So here I'm just using the topology. So if I push that in there, I'll get like a little bit of a hard edge. I'll always use a bit of polish page polish flatten it back out a little bit <laughs> yeah that little pinch there maybe this side yeah mm. 
and this way I can avoid like if I'm using pinch all the time it can just give me a lot of hassle with as you've seen earlier pulls in places that I don't really want it to pull in uh, Jeremiah is saying how much do you like the new update of ZBrush yeah it's great um, the features that they added they added in the last one like especially the cloth sim I just thought was super cool to be included in um, in ZBrush um, to have that directly inside ZBrush like is is awesome um, and like I said earlier like one of my favourite things even though it's small but that's the thing it's always the small things that just make your life that a little bit easier that uh, I think most a lot of professional artists kind of like the most or appreciate the most is like the edge extrude having an edge extrude is fantastic See there, it goes all the way through, so it'll give us a complete cut. This could be a great little print, actually. I'm just thinking. Put a little tea light in it. I'm not going to get my print on time, though. It's so upsetting. Oh, it's definitely... Oh, I have two minutes left. Whew. thought it was... I always underestimate time. I think like three minutes has gone by and actually like 20 minutes has gone by. So the next stage would be like maybe adding some, some twisty bits, sculpt that in there for the fun of it. new computer I got the I thought it was I got the um the 3080 I don't think that thing's gonna come to like Christmas now at this stage because to begin with I was getting like automated emails to say oh your delivery will be here in two weeks super excited and then I got an email to say oh they're just automated they don't take into account if there's a lack of any uh, hardware uh, we don't have the 3080s in at the moment. There's a queue for them. That's very upset. I just want my new computer now. And my new printer. I won't know myself. I remember... Uh, NK Animation, I remember the video of the old, the old woman stomping on grapes. Yeah, but she falls and makes the maddest noise when she <laughs> she hits the ground. Yeah, she knocks the wind out of herself and she's like, ooh, uh, ooh. I shouldn't be talking like that. Someone's mother is like, that maybe happened to her and they're going to be upset now. But look, it was just, it was objectively funny. I mean, as long as she's all right now, which I'm sure she is, she's just we all knock the window over, your, over ourselves from time to time. When you're a kid and you swing on a branch, you let go at the top and you fall flat on your back, take the window yourself. That's a hard lesson. It's a hard pill to swallow. This could be a bit more varied, really, wouldn't it?
Yeah, let's we'll sculpt into this. So this is something I'll probably just do this off the stream and finish this up. Sculpt into this. I I probably add a little bit of details into this. You know, little little uh, notches or whatever. Um. Again, I'm just kind of looking for like a kind of nice flow. To everything similarly, similarly to the way you would with like hair, if you're sculpting hair. Um, a little bit of overlap. Just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. I sound like Bob Ross. His happy little stalk and his happy little head. I think I do that sometimes. I think I sound like Bob Ross sometimes. It makes me kind of. I mean, not there's anything wrong with Bob Ross. I just don't think, you know, Bob Ross is Bob Ross. You don't want to be trying to be him. It's his own thing. I'm talking shit. Okay. Let's say it was something. find that shape a little bit I guess or something so the final idea So the final idea is <clears throat> I actually probably want to add like the hands and stuff and this stock. Same kind of approach to all that kind of all that. Um in terms of how I sculpted it and stuff. Same brushes, all that kind of stuff. Um and just putting in the geometry, pushing it into place and um keeping it kind of clean, keeping it low res. And then the idea is I'll probably have like a bit of a low angle. I think I need to stretch his head out a little bit more still. And put a candle in its head. Maybe one render where there's no candle in his head and there's a light in the front of his face. Because I'd almost like, I'm imagining him coming out of the, out of, I was going to say cabbage patch. You know what I mean? Pumpkin patch, is that a thing? And and there's the life from like the farmer's house and that's he's in awe he's like oh what's that and that light is on his face and um, he's cute but objectively terrifying narratively at least um, but it needs to look like ooh and do that render and then do another render with a candle on his head because you really got it, right? You got it. It's gonna be fun with some subsurface scatter and stuff. Um, my folks like the game show Wipeout. Yeah, totally. Uh, looks awesome. If I had your skills, I'd probably afford food for the night. Oh shit! I hope you're okay. Um, where are your happy little accident? Did I, is that I feel like you're referencing something I said before and um, maybe bring that up on the next stream because we have to wrap this up um, and poor Abdullah has just joined and said hi and now I have to say bye guys because we have to wrap up because we're, we're out of time we're actually over time so I love you and leave you I'll finish this up you should be able to see the render soon you can um, you know I'll put it up on like my Instagram, which is just Paul DC Sculpts, and my art station. Uh, again, just find, you can find Paul DC on Art Station. And uh, my Instagram has actually a, a link tree with uh, links to everything. Uh, I can maybe drop it in the chat after. And uh, 
I'll yeah, see you yeah, make sure you can see the render around uh when I get it done. So thanks guys, thanks for joining and uh, I'll catch you not this Wednesday but the next Wednesday. So enjoy and have a great Halloween also and peace.